Oftentimes, you find yourself in a tight spot where you owe your friend or your business partner some money. Uh, this is usually followed by threats, assaults, and seizure of movable property. In extreme cases, the creditors involve the police or in a bid to recover this debt. If you have not experienced this before, then you definitely know somebody who has been through such ordeal. The debtor is usually arrested, placed behind bars and released only when the creditor gives the order. Does the police have the right to recover debts or are they now a debt recovery agency? On our second segment of the show, the chronicles of DCP Abakeri may have been over for now. As the intelligence response team commander, he has been suspended by the Police Service Commission owing to an alleged indictment by the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the U.S. over an involvement in a $1.1 million internet fraud perpetrated by a fraudster, Abbas Ramon, popularly known as Hush Papi. With a new face in the block now, in the person of DCP Olatunji Disu, what difference does it make? These are the issues we will be discussing on today's episode on Security Lens. Many thanks for joining us. I am Victor Mbadeke. Welcome. Police officers allowed to recover debts as DCP carry deed for Hosh for Peace friend. And let's find out in this interview with a conflict advice was allowed in Hashim. Enjoy. This is one issue that a lot of Nigerians are really, really worried about. Every time we call in the police to recover debts, and we saw that in the case of Hosh Papi and DCP Abankari. What is your take on that? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, and of course, uh, generally, I think uh, it is one of the erroneous uh, uh, involvement uh, or perception of citizens to think uh, that the police has got anything to, to do with this. Uh, but let me say very categorically that it is illegal and unconstitutional uh, to involve the police in the recovery of debts of any kind. Uh, and mind you, uh, we're talking about debts and not theft, okay? So so long as it is an issue of debt, there is no way the police need to be involved. And if you look at the entire uh, police act, uh, it, does, it contains the duties uh, and responsibilities of the police, uh, but at no point did it uh, uh, ever mention uh, that the police has got the responsibility to arrest a debtor on the instruction of a creditor. It is a complete anomaly, and I think it is something uh, that has a fundamental flaw that requires that even every citizen uh, needs to be uh, put on notice around and a lot of awareness around this uh, should be done. Let me also state here uh, that uh, the failure of a debtor to liquidate 
uh, his death is not a criminal offense. That might be a little bit uh, strange, uh, but that is the truth. Uh, under the law, uh, your inability to not to be able to liquidate your debt is not a crime. Uh, and that is because it is a civil uh, a relationship or transaction that does not in any way except where criminality is involved. Like I mentioned that if it is theft, if the issue of the issuance of dot check is involved or something that requires the attention or, or any form of criminality, but so long as you cannot establish the ingredient of criminality, then there is absolutely no reason to involve the police. It is a civil conversation. It is a civil transaction. And of course, in all of this issue, uh, they do not have any form of uh, interference or involvement. Various court orders and court judgments have also, uh, at different instances, uh, established uh, this uh, uh, case. Uh, a, a citizen is also advised uh, that when you want to recover your debt, uh, that you need to resist the urge uh, to also resort to self-help. And of course, uh, informing the police in the attempt to recover your debt is resorting to self-help. And one of the self uh, resorts to self-help that one needs to also avoid should also include the use of threats, uh, the use of harassment, oppression of the debtor, and the use of thoughts. And I know that this is one of the very big things that we see on a regular basis. And of course, this has also brought us to the issue of charging a particular percentage uh, once that particular debt uh, is also uh, recovered. This is completely an issue that does not concern the police. And of course, uh, it is unlawful and requires that uh, their practice uh, should be completely uh, abolished. The duty of, of the police is to protect, contain, and of course, to prevent crime. And there is no way as such that uh, the Police Act has actually enlisted the recovery of debt as one of the major uh, functions of the police. And it tells you very clearly uh, that uh, there are lots of uh, 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 anomaly that goes on uh, within the system that has become normative. Uh, but of course, it is important to put it on the record that there is nowhere under the law that the police is empowered to collect or to recover debt on behalf of a creditor. It is a complete uh, uh, anomaly that requires a lot of sensitization and, of course, practice. The police does it. And, of course, we have seen Kerry also uh, getting involved, and we have seen how it has also landed him. So, but it is important that uh, a lot of re-awareness and training of police personnel uh, should actually be established around this. It is also one of the big things that we see around citizens. Once you have a civil transaction, the next person you want to make contact with is the police. It is, it is actually understandable because the police is actually the closest, but unfortunately, they do not have that powers. And as such, if they do not, then what should you do? There are other agencies who are empowered by law you know, to carry out this particular kind of functions. And of course, it actually exempts the police and other security agencies. So, but in a nutshell, the police has got nothing to do with the issue of debt recovery. This arms we are carrying around was purchased for us with the money gotten from members of the community. We know they are paying us to protect members of the public. So make we can carry that same gun, they kill members of the public. Very few of us will spoil the name of the police. For God's sake, why carry gun? Cock gun for where many people did. So we will not forget that thing we didn't teach us for academy now, or we didn't teach us for police college. And I don't forget, then talk say it is better to allow armed robber to escape than to kill what? Thank you. It is better to allow even armed robber to escape than to kill one innocent person. The intelligence response team unit has a new commander in DCP, Tunji Disu. But I believe one of his main focus now will be how to restore confidence in the team. I think this is going to try. He's going to try more. Because when he was in the RRS in Lagos, he tried without 
everything go down. Arm robber go down in Lagos State that time. And I know Tiji Dizu is going to try. All police are the same. You understand? This current, this current government, you understand? Even this country, I'm already corrupt. Everybody, you understand? Even you, they carry money, give you, say, me, give me. You understand? That money will cause fight between me and you. Now, corruption. You're Obama. You're Obama. Where do you find gold there? No money. To do this, is it not, not be Lagos say this thing? And Timmy will close that chapter. You understand? I forgot that chapter. To do this. I, I was, I, the, the way I will see the thing online yesterday, I said, so they can't put here. See the man where they carry come for Lagos here, where they carry go, go Benway. Not be since then, Benway don't get prayer. Never forget about it, you understand? This country. It don't end already. May God, may God believe us. Yes, you know, go fit the position of trust when they, they say you do something wrong. So they need to remove and fair. So the way they say remove, I do okay. But if eventually, if he come get say, okay, they can't go try and he no can't take guilty of the thing where they accuse them of, there is no, they can still bring them back and restrain, I mean, bring them back and still give them position. So me, I don't see anything wrong with waiting government too. By replacing him, no make say in the guilty or in no the guilty. Now until where they don't find out, say in no the guilty, no do anything. For me, no problem. There's nothing wrong with it. Make him, make him be very, make him be faithful. You understand? Make him and serve the country. Because most of us, we don't want to serve the country. Now money, 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 now everybody they face. You don't want to serve the country. If you if you want to serve country, the country like other other Western world. Nigeria will not be like this. What agenda should he be setting for uh, Tunji DC? Who are a lot of people also regard as a super cop in his own right, or uh, maybe replacing like for likes. But beyond that, uh, you think um, uh, he, he can do this? Yeah, I think so. He's got uh, a very good uh, 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 credentials, and of course, you know, policing and policing duties requires that you understand uh, the regulation and have that side that supports you to be able to achieve what you have set out to do so. So, but I think he's able to, to, to actually achieve that. One of the big things that um, uh, this issue has shown up is that um, a, a man does not make an institution. Uh, the institution actually establishes models and actually shapes a man to become uh, what it wants to be. And unfortunately, our policing system since 1943 has not been able to establish uh, that sort of institution that will be able to uh, frame individuals uh, who are exceptional. We have seen a few of them uh, that have demonstrated uh, this, uh, but like Kiari, uh, he has also just simply betrayed uh, the trust and confidence of Nigerians, uh, knowing fully well now uh, that uh, he's only selective uh, in uh, dealing in applying justice. Uh, so one of the things that uh, these two will need to do now is to, as a matter of urgency, uh, provide that uh, to bridge the disconnect between the citizens and that unit, because already there is a trust deficit that we need to deal with. The issue of image, we need to launder that image very quickly and, and let him also realize uh, that Nigerians are in need of the services and the interventions of what the IRT has done. We cannot in any way ignore the fact that uh, they have done quite a lot, busting big crimes, uh, busting syndicates, and ensuring that top-notch uh, top uh, uh, criminals are brought to records. Those are fantastic, and I think he needs to also build on that. But in an attempt to build on that, he needs to also establish the need for him to set up an agenda of one, putting a trust that Nigerians would actually build back into the system, and the second one would be for him to be able to put an infrastructure that will support the kind of work that is required of him. To be very honest, Nigerians are actually expecting so much. And that is because of what uh, Kiari has managed, you know, to put in a public space as his achievement. People think that there is something exceptional. And that is because he has been able to put some adequate infrastructure that has supported him in achieving some of those things. So with me, he needs uh, to also do an immediate review 
of strategies and approaches and tactics and see how he can also improve on them. And to be very honest, he also needs to be able to target some big time syndicates and see how he's able to pull them down. And if you recall that beyond uh, just using human intelligence, he also needs to rely a lot on technology. You cannot fight digital crime with an analog experience. So he needs to also find a way to build on his technological expertise, both himself and his team, to see how they can actually use that as a tool to be able to engage more constructively. And of course, most importantly, is the fact that he needs to build an, an IRT that can indeed uh, be owned by the citizens, because it is just not about the political will to put that institution or that uh, intervention in place, but how well are citizens comfortable uh, you know, with that sort of intervention, knowing fully well that in any area of operations that they will be protected and they will be, crime will be contained and not to involve them in any way. And of course, since Kiari had been, the saga had happened, we have seen a number of uh, outcries to suggest that uh, there are still some level of challenge uh, with uh, the way and manner people owned that particular process. And I think for me, that is also a fundamental thing that needs to be done as a matter of urgency. Interesting stuff. Uh, before I let you go, uh, are there banana peels that you think uh, uh, this should avoid? Absolutely. The first thing he needs to do is to review the existing team. Uh, some of them somehow have been compromised. Some of them somehow have participated in the carry uh, incidents. So he needs to first of all review that so that at least the existing bad egg would also not, you know, somehow negatively impact on him. One, if he needs to do some kind of psychosocial evaluation uh, of the entire team, it should be a bad idea. If he wants to carry out additional vetting of the existing team, it won't be a bad idea. If he wants to inject some new hands, uh, which he has worked with and he has some level of confidence in, then he needs to do that. But what is most important is that he must have a back-end approach to checking what his team does at different times. Otherwise, he will also fall into this same uh, situation. But what is most important is how he also interfaces with the larger citizens. Because clearly, for, for whatever reason, knowingly or knowingly, he interfaced with Hush Puppy and, of course, for some reasons, had some transaction. Maybe if he had, as a super cop, if you had somehow decided to carry out some kind of additional background check, it may have informed the decision that he must have taken. But maybe he ignored that. Maybe he left out those red flags, maybe deliberately or some otherwise, but it didn't happen. So this one was learned from all of these instances and used them as a way to also build up whatever decision that he must take. But to be very honest, he needs to be careful, he needs to be more vigilant, and needs to apply the policing tactics in the manner he delivers on his own duties. Those are the things that will help. Nothing is taken granted in policing duties. If he does not take anything for granted, I see him actually doing a whole lot and achieving much more. Fantastic again, Mr. Salahuddin. Many thanks for being part of Security Lens. Thank you again. And that's all we can take on today's episode. Many thanks for being part of this. You can always join us again next week for another bumper edition.
Many thanks once again. I am Victor Mbadeke. Bye for now.